My name is Jenny Dominowski, and in this video, I'm going to use the concepts of thermodynamics in order to explain why popcorn kernels pop. It is definitely something that we don't think about often, so I thought it'd be neat to explain and to show how thermodynamics applies to even the most commonplace reactions. First, I'm going to start off with a simple explanation of how popcorn pops in general, and then I'm going to go back and explain this process in terms of thermodynamics. So what is a popcorn kernel made of? Well, as you can see from this diagram, a popcorn kernel is essentially made up of soft starch that is surrounded by a hard shell, known as the hull or pericarp. The starch usually consists from 11 to 14% of water, which is trapped inside the starch. As we heat up the popcorn kernel, the starch also begins to heat up, as well as the water inside it. The water and the starch mix together, causing it to turn into a gelatinous substance. As the temperature exceeds the boiling point of water, the water begins to turn into steam, which wants to expand. However, the pericarp is strong and is able to hold the steam inside the shell. But as the temperature keeps increasing, so does the pressure, and eventually the internal pressure of the pericarp will reach catastrophic failure. It will burst open, and the steam, along with the gel-like substance, will expand rapidly. The starch will then cool almost immediately to form the white puffy stuff we know as popcorn. Now let's approach the situation thermodynamically. In thermodynamics, we represent whatever we're analyzing by classifying what the system and the surroundings are. A system is what we're looking at. In this scenario, we are defining our system to be the popcorn kernels. The surroundings are everything else in the universe. So everything that isn't the popcorn kernels. For example, the pot the kernels are in, the kitchen, your house, etc. We classify our systems in thermodynamics according to five different categories. The first category is components. By this, we are asking you to think, what is the system made of? Going back to our diagram of the popcorn kernel, we can see that it is made up of starch, water, and a hard exterior shell. This makes it a multi-component system. The next category that we classify systems by is phases. This is asking us to specify what phase our system is in. Since we have two different phases present in our system, liquid and solid, our system is classified as heterogeneous. The third category is based on whether or not there is an exchange of matter. In our case, the system is closed, since only heat is being exchanged between the popcorn kernels and the surroundings. There is no exchange of mass. The fourth category that we classify our systems by is reactions. This is asking if there are any chemical reactions happening in our system. Popping popcorn is a process that occurs in multiple steps. Throughout most of the steps, there are no new compounds being formed, since these changes are all physical, indicating a non-reacting system. However, there is a chemical reaction that occurs when the kernel is being heated. The starch is originally crystalline, but as the water and starch mix together due to the heat, an amorphous starch is produced. This is the gelatinous substance that I described earlier. Therefore, because there is a chemical reaction, our system is classified as reacting. The final category that we use to classify a system is by looking at the kinds of work that are present. Since our system of popcorn is dealing only with changes to pressure and volume, our system is classified as simple. To summarize, our system is multi-component, heterogeneous, closed, reacting, and simple. This helps us understand our system better, as well as what is happening thermodynamically. There are three main laws in thermodynamics. To simply summarize these three laws, the first law states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. This law is also known as the conservation of energy law. The second law states that a system that is not in equilibrium will always go towards its equilibrium point. It will go towards the state of maximum entropy. I will explain more about entropy later on in the video to clarify this concept. The third law states that as a system approaches absolute zero, the entropy is also zero. While this law is fundamental to thermodynamics, I will be focusing more on the first and second laws since they are the most applicable to our situation. The first law of thermodynamics implies that heat and work are a form of energy and that energy is conserved. The first law of thermodynamics is represented by this equation. Basically, what this equation means is that the change in internal energy which is the total energy contained within a system, is equal to the amount of heat supplied into the system plus the amount of work that is done on the system by the surroundings. W prime represents the other types of work that we define to be complex. Since our system is simple, we can ignore the W prime term. 
The W term represents the mechanical work done on the system and it is defined by the following equation. The steam in a popcorn kernel is expanding against the shell. An expansion is represented by a positive delta V, which indicates an increase in volume. This makes the work term negative in our equation, which makes sense since work is being done by the system on the surroundings. The heat transferred into the kernel is transformed into work by the buildup of pressure and the expansion of the steam. To summarize, the total energy in our popcorn system is conserved, showing up as heat and work. Now let's talk about the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics has to do with spontaneous reactions and entropy. A spontaneous reaction is one that does not require any extra work or input in order for a system to behave a certain way. For example, ice cream will melt on a hot day if we leave it in the sun. We don't have to do anything to cause this process to occur. A simple way to think of entropy is as a measure of disorder or randomness. The second law states that for any spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe increases. A way to think about this is by relating the universe to your bedroom. It starts off clean, but over time, it gets more and more messy. There is more disorder. We can see in our popcorn system that the entropy increases throughout. The heat transferred to the kernel causes the atoms of the solid starch and the liquid water to vibrate faster and faster. The solid starch will spontaneously transform into a liquid, while the liquid water will spontaneously change phase to a gas. A liquid has more disorder than a solid since the atoms are not rigidly held in place, and a gas has an even higher amount of randomness and disorder since the atoms are free to move around. Also, the steam inside the kernel will spontaneously expand since a larger volume will result in an increase of the entropy. The ideal gas law also describes the process of popping popcorn. When we rearrange the ideal gas equation to solve for pressure, we can see how the other variables, such as temperature and volume, are related to it. Here is the rearranged equation. Pressure and volume are inversely related, whereas pressure and temperature are proportional to one another. This relationship between these variables is clear when we make popcorn. As we increase the temperature of the kernel, the pressure inside the kernel also rises until it eventually reaches the breaking point of the shell, which is around 10 atmospheres. Then, as the shell breaks, the pressure drops immediately to one atmosphere. This sudden decrease in pressure causes an increase in volume which is why the fluffy popcorn we get as an end result is about 40 to 50 times larger than its original volume. When the shell breaks and the popcorn forms, the thermodynamic concept of an adiabatic process is present. The name sounds very fancy, but really all it means is that there is no heat flow going into or out of the system. In other words, if we go back to our equation of the first law, that Q equals zero. When the shell breaks, the rapid expansion of the kernel happens so fast that the system doesn't have time to exchange heat and reach a thermal equilibrium with the surroundings. This is why there is no heat flow, and it is also the reason why popcorn is usually steaming after it pops. The steam inside doesn't have time to equilibrate with the surroundings, so it is simply released. The gel-like starch substance is also released into the air, and it is cooled almost immediately due to rapid expansion. Instead of releasing heat to equilibrate with the surroundings, the system equilibrates with the pressure. The expansion of the popcorn kernel stops when the pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. Well, that just about wraps everything up. Thanks for watching. Next time when you make some popcorn, maybe you will think of this and how cool thermodynamics can be.